Hey everybody, it's me, Rick Acosta, the Dodger Card Collector, coming to you with another video. Today is Friday, very late, July 28th. By the time you see this, it'll be Saturday morning. Uh, greetings to all of you who are having fun at the National. I wish I was there with you guys, having a good time, uh, buying some cards, which would be really neat. Uh, I have been to the National before. I went in 1990. One in Anaheim, and I also went in 1996 in Anaheim, and I met Sandy Koufax that day and got an autograph. What I didn't realize, and I never knew this until I started watching YouTube. Uh, when I started watching YouTube, it's going on, what, two and a half years? Uh, I heard a lot of, you know, people talk about the, the National, and and I'm one of those who likes to do research and do history, and it, it made me want to go you know, look at the, the history of the National. And from looking it up on, you know, the National, their website, uh, they actually talked about this card, the very first National. And from reading their website, it made me realize that I went to the very first National. I didn't know that until just like a year or two ago. But as you saw, I had some ads from the very original, uh, from the first National, August 28th to September 1st, the Grand Ballroom at the LAX Marriott Hotel. Admission was a dollar. I went. I was all of 14 years old, maybe 15. And it's it's a story that I want to talk to you guys about because I haven't I haven't spoken about it with, with in, in years. What's funny is I literally just got off the phone with uh, one of my buddies who I went with that day. Uh, his name's Eric. I happen to bring him up a lot. And I was, he actually called me from Europe. It was so funny. Um, and we, I was telling him, do you realize we went to the very first national? And we were talking about our memories of that show. So I wanted to share those with you. And what, what, we, remember, what we remembered um, at this point, Eric and I and another friend, Dan, we were all working at a baseball card store. And we knew that there was going to be this major baseball card show. But back then, we called it a convention. Um, and it, if you notice the ad I put at the beginning, it says, like, collector's convention. Yeah, it's a collector's convention. So we called them conventions. And we said, we have to go. You know, this is going to be huge. It, we were already starting to go to some local baseball, baseball card shows that had 20, 30 tables. And back then, they were really good. Uh, you know, you'd find cards from the 50s and the 60s. Um, we had a good time, but we heard this was going to be a major show. So we lived about 30 miles from LAX, and we didn't drive. Uh, there was no subway system back then, nothing like that. So we go, we're going to take – the our only solution was to take the bus. Uh, taking the bus in L.A., I, I can't imagine doing it back then, but we actually used to do it. I wouldn't do it now. And I remember I was in charge of calling RTD, the Rapid Transit District, and trying to figure out how to get from my little hometown of Temple City, California, to LAX uh, to go to a baseball card convention. Well, you know, I made spent hours doing it, and uh, it was going to be a pain in the butt. But when you're 14 years old, you don't think anything's a pain in the butt, so... We said, okay, we'll take the bus. But then at the last, not at the last minute, but maybe a week before the show, my friend Dan, his parents, they had um, not a mobile home. They had they had a trailer or what was called an R, which in the 80s was like an RV. They had a trailer where uh, what, what their plan was, was they were going to park in the park. They were going to drive us to the card show, the convention. They were going to park the car. And in the car, you know, they had a kitchen and they had um, furniture and they had a television set. They were just going to spend the day in there while we were at the card show. And we thought, great, let's go. <laughs> Looking back on it, I think it's funny. But uh, back then, so we there was four of us and, and then Dan's parents, his mom and dad. So there were six of us in this car going to the, the card convention. And I had saved a shitload of money. And you're like, what's a shitload of money, Rick? Uh, I remember I took $30. <laughs> uh, 
I took thirty dollars to the card convention, and the neat thing was, um, I had honestly I had saved up ten dollars. Uh, mind you, I wasn't working, or I was working at a baseball card store. So I had my baseball card salary, <laughs> uh, and my mother sometimes gave me money for lunch. So that that was my that was my income at that point. So it was very funny just because um, I had ten dollars. My mother, out of the goodness out of her heart, gave me ten dollars. And then at the last minute, my brother goes, "Here, man, go have fun," and he gave me ten dollars. So I went with thirty dollars to the very first national. Admission was a dollar, and I was ready. I go, wow, $30. Now, unlike today, when you guys go to card shows, you know, you, you saw all these videos before the National. Take a backpack, wear deodorant, uh, you know, a good pair of shoes, uh, have snacks, have water bottles. We had nothing like that back then. It was just, we're going to show up. And I remember um, at the last minute, I decided to bring a bank bag and by a bank bag i mean it was a it was a bag um that you normally put coins in you know like the, the brinks truck driver would have them and he'd put like 50 rolls of quarters in there that's that's what i took to the national uh to buy cards and i was ready we were there all of 30 seconds when when i walked in and it was just mind you again we're talking 1980 we're talking uh, 14, 15 year old guys. And we walked in, it was a big hotel room full of cards, full of tables. You know, we were now imagine all of you right now how you felt this weekend going to Chicago. This was us 43 years ago. And we were, we were kids and we were already excited that somebody's parents drove us to this thing. So we're in there, and I'm not lying, it took less than five minutes. Within five minutes, I had bought a lot of 1970 tops, I think around 200 cards. And I also bought like two or 300 1968 cards. That was within five minutes. And all of a sudden, within five minutes, my friend's like, what are you doing? And I'm, and I'm like this. Here, I'm, gonna, I, I'm holding up cards. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I was just so overwhelmed, so excited. that all of a sudden, I had bought several hundred cards. Um, finally calmed down, put them in my bank bag, my bank bag, and, um, you know, walked around the rest of the day and it was, it was a fun day and they were, I don't remember much about what I saw with the exception of the cards that I've told you about. Uh, I do remember buying a 1952 Topps Bobby Shantz for a dollar and the reason I bought it was because I knew he was the MVP base off the 1952 MVP because of the 1975 Tops uh, MVP subsets. So I remember buying that. I remember buying those lots. I came home with like 800 or 1,000 cards, something like that. Um, time of my life. And we, we were there all day. And um, we all, the four of us, uh, all came home with a lot of cards. And it was a lot of fun. So that was... Uh, that was my excursion at the very first national. And I have, like I said, I had not been to one in a, in a very long time. I have to settle for the shows we have out here. But I can imagine if I went to a Burbank show or a Burbank show, uh, which is coming up in about a month. But if I did go to a national, I don't think I'd go as crazy, but I'm sure I'd be pretty damn excited. So anyway, what are we going to do today? I'm going to show you some cards. I promised you guys about three weeks ago and this didn't happen. Um, I was going to show you a hundred, it turns out it's going to be 111 years of card pickups. Um, so that's what we're doing today. 111 years worth of card pickups from various locations, such as, uh, the batter's box store out of, uh, Tumble, Texas. Um, some winnings from Greg Morris, some winnings from auction houses. And, uh, I made a run to the Burbank card store um, and the Burbank card store now has, if you're local and you happen to head out there, guys, they now have vintage, what they call vintage oddball cards. So, uh, they're in boxes. Definitely check it out. When I looked at them, they were cards from the sixties and the seventies with a lot of cards like Kellogg's, um, post cereal, uh, some tops inserts. And you're going to see some of the cards that I bought 
They're all from that vintage oddball cards section. So check that out next time you're at the Burbank card store. But uh, so that was my memory of the very my very first national, which turned out to be the first national. We didn't know that when we went. It's good to know that we went. It's good to know now, so I could say, yeah, I went to the very first national. Where the hell were you? Um, but uh, let's look at some cards. All right. Okay, the only way to do 111 years of pickups is to start modern day. And um, the only, you know, the, the only modern cards I buy each year are the 2023 Tops and Tops Heritage Dodger Team Set. Series 2 came out a few weeks ago. So we're going to take a look at some brand new spanking cards. Here's Trace Thompson. Uh, his dad is the former NBA uh, player Michael Thompson, played for the Lakers and the Portland Trailblazers, where he won, I think he's won two NBA championships. His brother Clay plays for the Warriors, and he's won several NBA championships. Trace has had an okay career. Unfortunately, uh, I've never had to do this before. He got traded today. He was traded by the Dodgers to the White Sox in a deal that uh, brought Lance Lynn and Joe Kelly to the Dodgers. So uh, good luck, Trace. I, I think he was a good player, uh, solid defensively. Uh, he was streaky as a hitter. Uh, unfortunately, he tended to get hurt. So Trace Thompson, <laughs> announcing trades on my channel. What the hell? Walker Bueller, here's a guy who uh, currently is on the DL. He had Tommy John surgery last year. He thinks he's going to come back in September of this year. I don't know, um, but here is his card. What do these backs look like? At least they're easier to read than the vintage cards. That's the one thing I'll give them advantage on. Uh, let's see, who's next? Outfielder James Altman. Rookie season, having a decent year for the Dodgers. A little streaky, but he's a solid player. Plays a lot of center field. It's a good looking design. We got the photo, then we got a little profile photo, and we got the logo. James Altman. Uh, next up, all star catcher Will Smith. I'm glad he finally is starting to get recognition for being a good player. Uh, he was named an alternate on the All-Star team, and it's good to see that people outside of L.A. know who he is. He's a solid performer behind the plate. Next up, a man who is being mentioned at this moment in trade rumors is Max Muncy. Don't know if it'll happen. There's a, side of me, there, there's a side of me that says, let's trade him. There's a side of me that says, let's keep him. It's always hard to get rid of guys, but uh, I don't know. If you're talking Nolan Arenado coming here, we'll see what happens there. All right, so that's Max Muncy. This is one thing that I always find interesting with the Topps cards. Uniel Diaz. Never have heard of him. I, I, I'll i be honest, I did not do any research, so I can't even tell you if this guy's a Dodger prospect. I don't think he is, seeing that that uniform looks like it was digitally placed on him. But here is Uniel Diaz. Yeah, he's been in the Dodger minor league system for several years. I can't tell you that. So, uh... And he's obviously not getting called up this year because, like I said, I've not heard a word. Uh, All-Star all -star designated hitter, <laughs> J.D. Martinez, having a hell of a year. I, I was thinking, what on earth are we going to do with this guy? And uh, he's put up some solid numbers for the Dodgers. He's on a one-year deal, so I'm assuming he won't be back. But let's try to win one this year and uh, give him a good memory. Give all of us a good memory. All of us Dodger fans, that is. Another guy who's rumored to be on the trade market, uh, Chris Taylor. Love Chris Taylor. Um, again, the Dod I think the Dodgers are at a crossroads where they're starting to get rid of some of the guys that have been on the team for a long time and trying to win this thing this year. And uh, Taylor's been mentioned along with Max Muncy as a possible uh, trade candidate to St. Louis for Nolan Arenado. Like I said, I don't know if that's going to happen. In a few days, this video could be obsolete with this remark I just said. Uh, let's see, Miguel Rojas, starting shortstop. That wasn't the plan. He was supposed to be the backup, but then Gavin Lux got hurt. Uh, 
Miggy's good defensively. Unfortunately, he can't hit, and it just seems like he's running out of gas right now. But uh, started off his career with the Dodgers. Dodgers traded him to the Marlins. He's been there for several years. Came back this year to help out Miguel Rojas. And last but not least is our backup catcher, Austin Barnes. Uh, what the, I love that we have a solid backup in Austin Barnes. I believe he's Clayton Kershaw's catcher as well. It's just nice to have a solid backup catcher because uh, some teams just don't have even one good catcher. And the Dodgers at least have two pretty good ones. So there's Austin Barnes. And those are my 2023 top Series 2 cards. As I made mention earlier, uh, Burbank Sports Cards now has these new vintage card boxes that are called Vintage Oddball Cards. So I know some of you don't like that term out there on YouTube land, but uh, Rob over at Burbank Sports Cards likes it, and he has a very nice selection of uh, oddball cards, basically from the 60s and the 70s. And when we're referring to oddball, we're talking, you know, Kellogg's, Post, uh, those type of cards, maybe some some Topps cards. And I picked, a bu I picked up several um, cards just because they were Dodgers. They were only a dollar. And, and uh, these, a lot of these cards that I'm showing you are the first cards I have from these sets. So, you know, as I mentioned to you earlier, uh, I, my collection is diversifying. I, I, like to, I like to have a lot of different cards from diff a lot of different cards from a lot of different sets. So in this case, let's start off with from the 1968 Topps game. That's Claude Osteen. He pitched at the very first, he was the starting pitcher at my very first Dodger game in 1973. That's something I'll, I'll talk to you guys about next week. Um, next, 1965 Tops embossed, Tommy Davis. I'll be honest, I did not like these cards whenever I see someone post them on YouTube, but I saw the price and I could, I, I actually can see Tommy Davis's face in here. So, uh, it's a unique, what, I guess you'd call this an insert set from 1965, and that's Tommy Davis. From the 1963 post set, here's Ron Fairley. Another set I'm not too fond of, but I couldn't pass some of these cards up that I'm about to show you, just because they're baseball cards of players uh, from teams that I love, like the Dodgers. So here's Ron Fairley, and these were cut straight out of the cereal box, you can tell. This is the 1963 post version. This would be an interesting set to work on just because there's so many cards. I can't imagine um, back then in the 60s trying to complete this set. So that's Ron Fairley. From the 1962 tops, or <laughs> tops, 1962 post set, here's Charlie Neal. And just so you know, there's nothing in the back. And these were cut out of cereal boxes and features his stats from the previous season and his lifetime lifetime stats as well. That's Charlie Neal. Um, also 1962 post, Willie Davis. Played, he played a good, uh, God, what he played 13? Willie Davis played about 13 years with the Dodgers. Won a couple of World Series early in his career. And the last guy from the 1962 post set is Duke Snyder. And you can never have enough Duke Snyder cards. And like I said, all these postcards were so cheap I couldn't pass them up. So uh, this is 1962 post. Uh, another, this is a regional set. This is the 1962 Bell brand, something that was released in Southern California. They had three sets from 1958, uh, 1960, 61, and 62. And in this case, here's a 1962 Maury Wills. Now, I'm going to bring this out now. I'm going to go a little out of order. And the next card here is a 1961 Bell brand Wally Moon. By looking at them, it's very hard to determine what's a 1962 card and a 1961 card. The only way I can figure it out is if you read the back of the, of the Wills card, 
you know, start your collection of 1962 LA Dodgers players. And then on this one, start your collection of 1961 LA Dodger players. Um, these are from Bell Brand Packages, a potato chip company. So 1962 Maury Wills on the right, and a 1961 Bell Brand uh, Wally Moon on the left. Those are my Bell Brand cards. Now we're going to go back to post for one last roundup. Uh, here's the 1961 John Roseboro. 1961 post John Bur Roseboro. All these cards that I've shown you from the post era, from post, um, I think they cost me like a buck, maybe a buck fifty. And then I splurged and, and spent a whopping $8 on a 1961 post Hank Aaron. And I'm like, wow, I, I can't pass up a Hank Aaron card. So here is Hank Aaron. Uh, we, like I said, I just love Hank Aaron, so I had to get this card for $8. This is a good card to have. So those are my postcards. Those are the very first postcards I've ever had in my set. Um, I said I won't, I'm only going to buy these, famous last words. I definitely don't want to start a set just because it's too much. Um, I've been working on my 1961 Tops High Number set. And uh, I was buying All Stars, the All Star subset, which I'm going to show you some more shortly. But I've been toying with the idea. Uh, it looks like it's starting to happen. I'm thinking of just working only on the 1961 Tops High Number set. And I mentioned that to you in a previous video. So I uh, got lucky on Greg, with Greg Morris a few weeks ago. And some of these cards have arrived. The first couple I believe I'm going to show you. The first one I'm going to show you here is Andy Carey. This is actually a, a semi-high number. This is card number 518. And that's Andy Carey. And I want to say Andy Carey. Yeah, this is the Andy Carey that played on the Yankees. I have his 1953 card on the Yankees. Third baseman back then. Still a third baseman here with the Kansas City Athletics. That's Andy Carey. Now, starting with the high numbers, here's Chuck Hiller, second baseman, San Francisco Giants. And from reading up on the 61s, I'm learning... Uh, it's very hard to find these cards centered. So in some, there are a lot of these, if not all of them, are off-centered. And uh, they're, they're still in really good condition. They're just, they were printed uh, centered. Marty Katunia, or Kutnia from the Washington Senators, pitcher. Nice uniforms. Marty And next, San Francisco Giants pitcher Sam Jones. That's Sam Jones. One more, yeah, one more. And I'm gonna I'm gonna botch this name. So Don Ferrarsi, pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. Card number five fifty eight. So I guess I'm working on a nineteen sixty one tops high number set. We'll see if I pick up some more, but uh, let's move on here. All right, some more vintage pickups. Some of these I picked up, uh, bought from the batter's box. Some of these, I believe, I've won from Greg Morris. Uh, I'm continuing, as I just mentioned a moment ago. Um, hi, Sadie. My cat just walked in. Um, it looks like I'm accumulating more 61 tops high numbers. Here is Pete Burnside. Picture for the Washington Senators. Next up is Rocky Bridges. Now, 1961 is the first year of the Los Angeles Angels. They were an expansion team. And by this, by this series, the seventh series, uh, we were seeing the Angels in their full regular uniforms. So this the high numbers are really good at that when, in 1961 and 1962 because we start seeing these expansion teams with guys in their regular uniforms compared to the first few series where they're capless and airbrushed. There's Rocky Bridges. Here is catcher Camilo Carrion of the Chicago White Sox. And, you know, when you look at these cards, 
the 61 high numbers are kind of famous. But when you're not looking at a Mickey Mantle card or a Hank Aaron card, these vintage cards are still nice to look at just because they're, they're just... They're just nice. There's some good players in here. Art Dittmar of the New York Yankees. These aren't quite high numbers. These are semi-high numbers. He's card number 510. I think the high numbers start at 523. Jim Brosden, pitcher of the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds had their, their vests back then where you could see their full red sleeves. They had the white cap with the red bill. Jim Brosnan. Okay, now we're into a couple of high numbers here. Casey Stevens, first base for the Washington Senators. I think I won these. These high numbers I won from Greg Morris over the past few weeks. Uh, here is Charlie James, another high number, my last high number. Outfielder for the Cardinals. Uh, let's see. These next ones are from the batter's box. Tom Brewer. 1956 tops. Tom Brewer. Pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. Card number 34. 56 is a nice set. Don't get me to keep talking about it or else I'll end up starting a set. Mayo Smith manager of the Phillies. I also remember him as the manager. God, could it be the Kansas City Royals in the late six, like the original Kansas City Royals? I'm not sure. Mayo Smith. I know somebody's going to tell me in the comments who he managed. Let's see. Bob Speak of the Chicago Cubs. Bob Speak. Al Silvera, outfielder for the Cincinnati Redlegs. I always like that, the Cincinnati Redlegs, not known as the Reds. And look at the color of their caps. The 1961 cap I, uh, was white with a red bill. This one's dark blue. The Reds kind of look like the Indians, and that C also looks like the Indians. Even the Cubs kind of had that type of a C at that point. Uh, here's a good action card. Leroy Powell, outfielder for the Chicago White Sox. Looks like he might be taking a run there at Bobby Richardson. Not sure. And let's see, Johnny Groff, Kansas City, Kansas City A's, before they were green and yellow, before Charlie Finley bought them. And here's a case of me making a mistake, but luckily I didn't have the card. A 1951 red back of Billy Goodman. I did not read the description on eBay thinking I was buying blue backs. And I accidentally bought a red back. When I got the card, I turned it over and I go, this is a red back. I bought a blue back. Went back on eBay, jumped on and noticed right away it said red back. So the purpose in, in showing you and all these cards that I'm showing you from the 60s and the 50s is I also, one of the things I enjoy about my collection is trying to, you know, you hear the word diver diversification, diversify my collection. And I like to have a good, well-rounded uh, collection. I do collect sets. I do collect Hall of Famers. I do collect Dodger team cards. But I also like to have good representation of cards from years that I will probably never own sets. So 1956, 1951, 19, a lot of 50 sets. Um, I'll try to buy like 50, 75, 100 different cards just in case someday I decide to build a set, but also just to have a wide range of cards in my collection. Because my, in my opinion, a, a good card collection or a great card collection has cards from all years of, um, the, of the 20th and 21st century. And if you're lucky, the 19th century. All right, my next card is from the Memorabilia Network. I met these guys at the Burbank Card Show in Ontario several months ago, and they said they were having an auction, and one day I went to go look, 
And again, since the theme here is, you know, 110 years, 111 years of pickups, trying to show a wide variety of cards, being having my collection being diversified, I picked up a 1955, is it 1955? <laughs> Red Man, Carl Erskine, it is. Um, I saw this card, like I said, on their memorabilia on their uh, on the memorabilia network auction site. They had some decent cards for their first auction, and I got this card at a great price. And I've seen some of the YouTubers show these cards off, and I usually I, I usually don't delve into these type of products, but I'm very proud of my Dodger collection, and I want it to get better. And it's time to maybe, one of the goals I'm trying to do, I picked roughly 12, 15 regional uh, sets uh, that I'd like to buy a card from for, for each series. So um, you're starting to notice I'm, I'm buying Morel Meats cards and Bell brand cards. And um, here's Red Man, and maybe I could buy some Wilson Franks cards. And like I said, I'm just trying to have a, a, a little bit Without going too crazy, having a little bit wider range of um, of a collection. Now, the neat thing about this, and this is for you local people, you know, you in the L.A. area. Um, I wanted to save on shipping. I wanted to save the $15 on shipping. They said I could come by and pick it up. And I got to go to their offices, uh, the Memorabilia Network. And uh, it's funny because I've never been, like, in a so-called auction area and you just saw cards everywhere with people's name on it. Um, but what they informed me was, and I wanted to let you guys know that local to the area, is these guys have a store. It's called the Memorabilia Network Store. And it's at the Westfield Fashion Square Mall in Sherman Oaks. Uh, I'm thinking of heading out there this weekend um, just to check it out. Uh, they had a very... Uh, unfortunately, it was sold. They had a very nice Sandy Koufax autographed photo. Um, even though I already have a Koufax autographed photo, this one I really want. And I want it so much that I'm not even going to share it with you until one day, hopefully, I can buy it. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'm going to go check out this memorabilia store and uh, I'll let you guys know about it. And my last card is from 1911. T202 Hassan Triple Folder featuring Bill Dolan, William Dolan, Zach Wheat. Um, I bought this card from, uh, is it, was it Collect Auction or the Collector Network out of Wisconsin? The card arrived. And again, I'm just trying to get one card from some of these sets that I'm never going to own fully. And I thought this was a great card. It's a good looking set. Um, you know, the more the more pre-war cards I buy, and honestly, the more of these tobacco cards I see, I'm like, it's a rabbit hole I don't want to go down, but there are some beautiful cards. Um, and I really like this set a lot. Uh, for me, this is my second Zach Wheat. I already own the T206 card. The, the thing I find interesting, this is just the way my brain thinks. Um, Bill Dolan, he is the player here on the left. He is the only card, the only player, this is the only card in my collection with a player that played in the 19th century. Um, his, his career started way back in the eight, late 1880s, early 1890s. So it's interesting to, you know, I showed you um, my 2023 Dodgers. So it's it's always just kind of funny to see, um, you know, my collection spans from Zach Wheat and Bill Dolan in a 1912 T202 Assange Triple Folder to 2023 Topps Dodger cards. Um, that's part of the fun of collecting. And I really like... I, I really like these these large cards. I uh, found nice displays to put them in. And uh, yeah, so that is 111 years of pickups uh, that you're seeing today. If you stuck with me this long, thanks so much for hanging out. And we'll talk to you next time. It's a beautiful day for us.